Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I love historical fiction, or in some cases, historical romance. Not your typical swooning type of historical romance. Uh, the lady is making her London debut and she's about to marry a Viscount or she wants to marry a Viscount or no, but when there's another type of story and that's what happens in this book here. And that's why this book that I'm about to talk about, A Love by Design, is more historical, sorry for that truck, more historical fiction, but definitely historical romance. And when you read historical fiction or romance, you have different genres. You have the Victorian era, you have the Gilded Age, you have the 1800s or the early 1900s or the mid 1900s, whatever. This book here and this series is the Victorian Age. And it is also the third book in a series. And I am actually going to show you the first two books because I love the covers. They are A Lady's Formula for Love, so I'll pop that up, and then A Perfect Equation. Now, uh, it looks like when I'm looking at my Goodreads, I gave A Lady's Formula for Love five stars and A Perfect Equation four stars. However, I am giving this third book, and the cover is going to come up now, A Love by Design, five stars. Okay, now, in each of these books, our characters, our female protagonists, are intelligent women that are defying natural uh, expectations. I use that word, expectations. And... Let's see which these other two were. In the ladies' formula for love, uh, she was, I'm pretty sure she was a mathematician. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a couple years, a year, at least a year or more. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can remember, but it's been about a year or more. And then when we read, a per no, a perfect equation, she was a mathematician, and the other one, she was a scientist. Well, what is our protagonist in A Love by Design? Okay, look at the word design. Design would mean architecture, right? Yes. And that's what this character that we have here, um, and her name is Margaret Galt, G-A-U-L-T, and she has a chance to work for or to have her own engineering firm, but in, or her in 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 actuality, it would be her first, the first woman-owned engineering firm. So I said architecture, but I'm thinking I'm just off a little bit. Now the thing is, before Margaret can get her feet on the ground to establish herself, which by the way she got into this thank thanks to her father. But once he passed away, her notoriety in her field withered away because she didn't have his backing any longer. So in order to achieve her goal, she takes on a contract. Now, Margaret is what has, there's a group of women that meet, a secret society. In fact, the series is called The Secret Scientists of London. And these women really do not like a particular man, a very prominent man. His business practices are very questionable. Well, in order for Margaret to even be able to establish herself, because now her father has passed away, now she is a widow, and now she wants to establish herself, she takes on a client or working for someone who has really shady business practices. And in so doing, she runs neck and neck against George Willis, who is the Earl Grantham. Now, the thing is, Margaret and George have a history. Yes, indeed, they do. And George has always loved Margaret. But his direction changed and their bond that they developed when they were younger withered away. He's happy that she found happiness in her marriage, but now when 
she's back on the scene and a widow, he may just have another chance. But here's the thing. Margaret, at some point, tells George, I don't know if she actually tells him in the story, but the reader, the reader that's reading this book will know how Margaret felt about her husband. And this really opens the door for what ended up being a remarkable historical romance. So yeah, we said going from historical fiction to historical romance. Now, I loved the story because I loved Margaret and her strength, and I loved George and his strength. And I also loved their connection and especially like, cause George had political aspirations. And when Margaret was working for the man that she contracted for, that could run right smack into what George was trying to accomplish. So not only are they getting to know one another again and feelings are beginning to surface, but there's a huge conflict of interest that could really you know, blow up everything that they could possibly experience. So because of the conflict, then Margaret is hush, hush, you know, lip seal, throw away the key about who she's working for. So her relationship with George is threatened and her relationship with her friends. Nonetheless, because it is a historical romance, what do we get in a romance? We get an HEA. What is an HEA? A happily ever after. Yes, George and Margaret do find their way to one another. So when you read A Love by Design, you're going to find out how they do that. I love this book. I love this series. I love strong women in books like this, especially in the Victorian era. And that's what really made this book stand out for me. In any event, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.